the Augusta Heritage Gatherings in Elkins, where he first met with the Kimmonses. Bill and Rebecca Kimmons, uh, bass and soprano, respectively, <laughs> have performed and taught widely, including Augusta Heritage, Allegheny Echoes, at Festival in Charleston, has sung at Tamarack and on the mountain stage. They have sung during a couple of visits to Ireland as well. And Rebecca and I spent about 10 months together in planning sessions for the 2013 Create West Virginia Conference held here in Richwood in October 2013. But without further ado, please join me in welcoming the Bear Bones. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bill rarely ever gets uh, too cold, so tonight is Never. Be a real challenge for him. When you're sad, how can you get cold? But we're like Jack Spratt and wife in so many ways. I never, ever get too hot. He never gets too cold. Thank you all for coming out tonight. Uh, we got this little brainstorm for uh, a tour of church music, old church music, because my church, the South Charleston First Presbyterian Church, asked us kind of at the last minute recently to do a whole service on July 4th. The minister was going to be gone and they knew that the choir was going to be gone, everybody was going to be gone. So this is the kind of crowd we're used to play in here, right here. Can everybody <laughs> hear her? Can you all hear me? Yes. That's good. Okay, great. So we did this for our church and Doc um, came down and helped us out with this and we had so much fun preparing for our uh, church service on July 4th uh, that we decided that we wanted to take our show on the road. So I called my good friend, Bob Johnson, and this is our first tour, and perhaps only one, uh, for our show, Old Church Music. And the reason why we call it Old Church Music is because my Presbyterian church now has jazzed up and modernized so much of the church music. And we're rebelling, and we decided on <laughs> July 4th that we would do the old stuff, the old way. Yeah. So. And so, and it started out with this one here that, that uh, you don't hear much anymore, at least in our church. It used to be one that was sung every Sunday, but uh, they're not singing it now for some reason. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise for because we're talking about old church music. Our church has changed. They, even though they don't sing it anymore, it's always praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. They took the hymn out of it, the, the gender hymn out of it. But since we're doing old church music, we decided to put the hymn back in, yep. which, you know, maybe is not politically correct, but some old church music. Oh, well, anyway. So what are we doing next? So we've Becky, got a list? long list of songs, and some of this stuff, oh gosh, we might as well go ahead and, and just do it. Um, one of the songs for the July 4th service was already set, and that was Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. And the words for this were written in 1825. So that makes course, it old. 
but that's pretty old. And uh, I think Beethoven wrote the music for this. And I gotta warn you right now that we usually don't sing Beethoven. Uh, but we had such a blast. We're gonna sing this one. Yes, we are. We better get the words for it. Bill is worried. Here they are, darling. Okay, but well, yeah. what's that gonna look at? Uh, he has words, I believe, somewhere. So Excellent. forgive us. A lot of these songs we have committed to memory. And I've been singing this one since I was shooting my little kid. But I, I don't necessarily have it committed to memory, so we're going to do a little cheat sheet here. Um, ah, we had such a grand time practicing this song, and we realized how beautiful it is. And so we decided, bye golly, we're going to do it. We're going to try it for you. Yeah, so here we go. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the steps and it was this big line of train set and so this place has a special uh, place in my heart so my fondest memories. <laughs> right here. What's next Becky? Well uh, we've got a whole big long list of stuff. <laughs> we, we could be here all night you know. Um, don't mind us you know, just go ahead and leave when you need to. <laughs> Okay, we got the stuff that we usually said. We started out, Bill and I, way back in 1980, when I, I met him 
in late 1979, and we discovered On quickly, my mother's birthday. Yeah. We discovered very soon that we both were singers and, and really loved singing, and so we've been singing together ever since. That's a long time. Well, they say no Will. Uh, well, it, Will Fanning, that owns the Brazen Hand Inn up the road in Randolph County, he was the guy that we started singing with uh, originally, all those many years ago. And the songs that we would go to these music parties and the songs that we knew turned out to be these old time gospel songs. So we would be in the kitchen, all the guitarists and the instrumentalists would be in the living room, whanging away on the instruments, and we would be in the kitchen singing a cappella. That's what we all loved to do from the get go. So one of those early songs that we started singing just for fun at parties was Cole Jordan. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we're gonna sing that one for you. It's a real, it's old time music. Some of you all may be familiar with the music of Ralph Stanley. Uh, I think that this song was popularized in the 70s by Amy Lou Harris called Jordan. Yeah. And this is more along the lines of the stuff that we normally sing, not Beethoven. <laughs> or the doxology. Yes. Come and listen as you tread life's journey. Take, Take Jesus, Jesus as your daily guide, that you may feel pure and safely with all and walking by your side. And when you come to make that crossing at the end of every pilgrim's way, if you never did meet our Savior, you'll surely meet him on that day. Whoa, look at that cold joy. These deep waters, that wide river, oh, hear the mighty billows roar. You'd better take Jesus with you. He's a true companion, and I'm sure without him that you're never going to make it all. That awful day of judgment is coming in the by and by. In glory from on high. So let us keep in touch with Jesus and in his grace and love abide that we may be ever called ready when he calls us over Jordan's side. Whoa, look at that cold Jordan. Look at these deep waters. Look at that wide river. Jesus with you, he's a true companion, and I'm sure without him that you're never going to make it all. Oh, what, what you going to do? Oh, what, what you going to say? What you gonna say, man? Oh, how, how are you gonna feel when you come to the end of the way? <laughs> 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 we usually go on a company, but that time no, not. No, yeah. no, phone in. <laughs> Doc, um, we sang with Will Fanning of the Brazen Head Inn from, oh gosh, the 1980, right on up to about 2005. And Bill, I mean, Will built that inn, and that was really taking a lot of his time and attention. So in 2005, we decided that we would disband, that we wouldn't be singing as a trio anymore. But we had two more uh, appointments, two more dates to do. Contracts yeah, that contracts. we had signed. Yeah, so we needed somebody to sing with us. And uh, I said, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do? So Bill says, well, I know this guy that knows all of our songs and he's a really good singer. Uh, I said, well, all right. You and know, Becky had about. never met Doc yet, but Doc would follow us in the shadows, you know. Doc was very, very shy, very shy. 
then. And uh, <laughs> still, yeah, a little bit shy. Still but so we, we we got him to come and do those two gigs with us in 2006, and we just love the way I love the way. So uh, we made him um, a part of the trio there for about 18 months, and then he discovered pretty quickly that uh, life it, running to sing every weekend out on the road was not the life for a family man. So. He had young children then, and a church, so and all of this. then we found this. another singer in Charleston, and he's sung with us since 2007. We changed our name from the Missing Person Soup Kitchen Gospel Quartet to Bare Bones. And now, Mark Davis, the guy that was singing us, with us for so long from 2007, he now is married and has a three-year-old, so he's switched back to Doc. Because <laughs> his youngest is in college. Yeah. He's getting old. <laughs> You'll never catch up with me. So let's do let's do another one of those old time ones. So if it sounds a little bit like we're a little rusty, we're a little rusty. We just brought Doc back on, and we haven't really sung a lot in front of people for uh, as long as COVID's been on. Yeah, it's been kind of tough to get together with COVID, but yeah. we're we're making our charge. We're, we're doing so it. as we usually <laughs> say to Becky, oh, what are we singing next? Well, this is an old time song by G. T. Spear probably heard of the Spear family quartet. So uh, G.T. Spear was probably the original Spear. Wrote a lot of gospel songs, and he wrote this one called Daniel Pray. Oh, okay, cool. I heard about a man one day who wasted not his time away. He prayed to God every morning. But trusted God to set him free. Daniel pray. Oh, Daniel pray every morning, noon and night. Oh, Daniel served the living God and hid upon the sun. He prayed to God. He prayed to God every morning, noon and night. He Devotions every morning before we went to school. 
I'd always sit by my sister because she would poke me when it was my time to pray because I would usually fall asleep. Um, because I was one of those kids that liked to stay up late at night, but nobody knew it. Uh, and um, I learned things, so many things from you. <laughs> and then he would pray at noon, and then they would have devotions again at night. So uh, I would really <laughs> think of my dad every time we sing those. He was a fabulous man. I was really blessed to have him as a dad, and blessed to have my mom as a mom, even though she never really liked Becky. <laughs> Although we got 41 years coming up on what this week. What a revelation. Week. What a revelation. I thought she loved me. Anyway, uh, here's a song that was written by an old fella, Lotus Dickey. L O T U S, Lotus Dickey, who lived in southern Indiana. He was a fiddler, but he wrote songs, and he wrote this a huge number, probably 500 songs. And he said at one time that he thought someday he might be more famous for his songs than for his fiddling. Well, I don't know how famous Lotus is going to be for his songs, but we certainly do love them. They're just the most amazing songs and very, very different. Here's one of the first ones that he wrote back in 1949. So that makes it old and it's not necessarily <laughs> church music, but it's a sentiment that he was very much heartfelt by Lotus Sticky. So which one are we doing? I'm just a weary pilgrim here below. I can find Ooh. the rest wherever I go. I'm gonna shout and sing when the trumpets blow. I'm gonna carry my burden to the Lord. I'm gonna carry my burden. I'm gonna carry my burden. through a great West Virginia fiddler named Keith McManus. Anybody know Keith McManus and Stu Mulligan, the, his old time band? Well, Keith is now living down in Georgia, I think, but Keith was a fixture of old time music in West Virginia for many years. And he sang this song for me, David Loved Bathsheba, and it knocked me out. And so he had a whole bunch, uh, he had a field recording of Lotus Dickey singing his own songs. So by the time Lotus Dickey made this field recording for Keith, he was an old man, he had no teeth, and he uh, sang in this southern Indiana dialect, which is very much like a southern West Virginia dialect. So it was almost impossible to understand him. And also he wrote in King James language. So we're about to 
do his song, David Love Bathsheba. And this one really, I think, is more of an example of the kind of stuff he wrote. That one, Carry My Burden, which I love, it's beautiful. It's probably the simplest yeah. of all the songs that he wrote. And you will understand that after you hear the entire story of David and Bathsheba. Go for it. How beautiful was Bathsheba a bathing on the roof where David's eyes were cast to see amazingly the proof of her devastating beauty offered every opportunity of learning her identity her there to him they took from David went Bathsheba departing home in shame some days did then pass before he heard from her again in a moment weak of passion wild hath david bathsheba defiled her message came i am with child he knew who was to blame well david loved bathsheba she was another's wife ill-fated oh he had to be uriah the hittite being one of david's mighty men he left him in the fighting in the thickest of the battle and alone to lose his life david loved bathsheba saw an overwhelming beauty flamed a deep desire within David loved Bathsheba beguiled, defiled with passion wild and slew to hide his sin up spake the prophet Nathan a parable one day there takes a rich man a poor man's only one little you lamb away having of his own so many sparing not the poor man any what is to be done with that man david tell me now i pray how angrily spake david that man shall surely die oh ye he cried nathan you've taken from uriah first you take away his wife and then you take away his life from him david repented god forgave but struck the child to die to david and bathsheba was born another son oh great to them becomes to be the wise king solomon with the spirit of the lord was filled was chosen of the lord to build his temple great exceedingly there in jerusalem david loved bathsheba saw an overwhelming beauty flamed a deep desire within Beguiled, defiled with passion wild, and slew to hide his sin. Yes, beguiled, defiled with passion wild, and slew to hide his sin. He was a rhymester. He was. He's written. Uh, the entire story of Adam and Eve, which is called There, There, Were They. Oh, and uh, he's okay. written the entire story of Joseph and all of the brothers. The story of Exodus this, in this, one song. Know, yeah, in mm -hmm. one, oh man, so it is so we, haven't we, we hadn't learned it yet. Yeah. Okay, so what are you thinking next? So, well, let's go back to the plantations of the South, way back yonder before emancipation, before the enslaved people were emancipated. Uh, one way that they 
could bear the, the lives that they had was to sing and to sing about a better life. And sometimes we're going to do two spirituals for you here. And the first one is uh, one that I thought everybody in the whole world knew. And most West Virginians and most Southerners know this song. What they don't know is that this was the most popular song among fraternity men in 1891, okay? Uh, then it got, it was, this song was loved to death. Nobody wanted to sing this song. I'd say it's the very first song that I ever learned when I was three years old from my Baptist neighbors. Uh, but it got killed at 4-H camps and, <laughs> and various types of kids' camps. But I love to listen to these old songs and try to rediscover them and polish them up, dust them off. Uh, so here's this one. I'm sure you all will know it. I got a home in glory land that house shines the sun well, I got a home in glory land that house shines the sun well, I got a home in glory land that house shines the sun look up well, Say now do do Lord oh do oh Lord oh do oh remember me oh do Lord now do Lord oh do remember me oh do Lord oh do Lord oh do Lord now do remember me look up way beyond the blue well I took Jesus as my Savior you take him take him to well I took Jesus as my Savior you take him take him to well I took Jesus, you take him to the top, way beyond the blue. I said, now do, do Lord, oh do, do Lord, now do, remember me, oh do, Lord, oh do, do Lord, oh do, do Lord, oh do, do remember me. Have me say, do, do Lord, oh do, do Lord, oh do, remember me. predetermined uh, form for July the 4th. It was Lord, I want to be a Christian. If you all want to sing it with us, feel free. Lord, I want to be a Christian. In my heart, in my heart, Lord,
bow for four more fashions. got this song from John Morris. Anybody here remember the Morris brothers, David and John Morris? Well, they're excellent musicians. They, uh, David has passed on and John's still around. But 20 years ago, John brought this song to me and said, I really wish you would learn this. And uh, it was written by a gentleman named Tillett, Tillett Tedley from Tennessee. Tillett Deadly from Tennessee. We shall meet where no storm clouds fall. We shall meet. We shall meet where no storm clouds gather. We shall meet. We shall meet someday. about heaven and uh, about 
getting through this, uh, this life here that was full of troubles, trials, and tribulations. We might try oh, that oh. one in a few minutes. Oh, well, but I want to do, uh, <laughs> we shall meet. Here's a great song that a lot of people in the deep south know. This is a kind of a staple of the Southern Gospel Quartets, the Glad Reunion Day. Anybody know the Glad Reunion Day here? No, oh, y'all probably do. Yeah, well, if you don't, you'll know it in We don't, so What's we're going to turn to the page here. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, what do you mean? I think it's after this one. But we love singing. We love it because it swings. Can you speak up a little bit? My ears are getting older as we go. Well, I'm sorry. My husband tells me that when I talk, nobody can hear me. <laughs> He's often... Often thankful for that, but he said, Well, you know, sure I never about. have that problem. <laughs> he does. I should let him do all the talking. She tried once, and most people left before it was over. <laughs> there will be a happy meeting in heaven, I know. When we see the many loved ones we know. Blessed hilltops with hearts all aglow. That will be a glad reunion day. A glad day, a wonderful day. That will be a happy day, a glorious day. There with all the holy angels and loved ones too. So that makes it old. There was this little, yeah, 
There was this little gospel group called the Soul Stirrers. Have you ever heard of the Soul Stirrers? Anybody heard of the Soul Stirrers? Stirrers. Well, there was a fellow named Sam Cook that sang with the Soul Stirrers. He was the lead singer. Before he became Sam Cook. So, this was one of the songs that Sam Cook sang. With the Soul Stirrers. Yes. There was a woman from Samaria came to the well to get some water. There she met a stranger who did her story tell. That woman dropped a pitcher. She drank and was made richer from the water that he gave her. And it was not from the well. Oh, Jesus. He gave me water. He gave me water. He gave me water. Oh, he gave me water. 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 Singing glory, hallelujah, he did his praises tell That woman dropped a pitcher, she drank and was made richer From the water that he gave her, and it was not from the well Oh, Jesus, he gave me water, oh, he gave me that living water Oh, Jesus, he gave me water, he gave me water Baxter and compiled by Luther G. Presley, who was also a songwriter. Uh, it's got every old time hymn in it that imaginable. Page 84. Page 84 in your Heavenly Highways hymnal. <laughs> Please turn. Please turn to page 84, where we are about to sing a song called Just a Little Talk with Jesus, written by Cleveland Derricks. Now, if you've heard of Cleveland Derricks in New York City, you think of him as a Broadway actor because Cleveland Derricks Jr. is a Broadway actor. And so is his twin brother. Um, so they went up to New York City. That happens a lot, you know. Uh, Denzel Washington is the preacher's kid. And uh, Cleveland Derricks and his brother, I can't remember his name, they're preacher's kids. So, uh, but this was Cleveland, Cleveland the Derricks, father. the dad, who was a Baptist preacher, and he wrote this song. We've got it down pretty much, but we don't trust ourselves. Okay. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and did a little light from heaven fill my soul. It bathed my heart in love, and wrote my name above, and just a little talk with Jesus makes me whole. With 
Jesus. Let us tell him all about our trouble. He will hear our faintest cry. He will answer by and by. And when you feel a little prayer will turn in. And you know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. sin may rise and hide the starry skies, but just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus, let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. And when you feel a little prayer will turn in, and you know a little fire is burning, you will find a little is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer. He knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. sing, I recommend once COVID moves on and we can get together as large groups and go sing together and have things like normal used to be, which will never be again, but it can get close. But go to Vocal Week. Uh, it's always the last week of the Augusta workshops. You, and and you don't know what you're talking about. Augusta in Elkins, West Virginia. The Augusta Heritage Workshops in Elkins. They've been going on for about 35 years. Yeah, about 35 maybe, years. Maybe oh, it's wonderful. It oh. is absolutely wonderful. They do, like, they cut it back some, but if you all would start going to Elkins, they'd have it five weeks again. It's five weeks in the summer. And, it's yeah. just and now they've cut it back to three weeks. It's but one of the few places where you can walk around 24-7 singing to yourself and no one thinks you're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> or if they do, they don't say anything. Yes, so. well, I mean, they... And that's kind of where we met Doc. I mean, that's where he heard us sing the first time, was at the Augusta Heritage Workshops. Okay, well, it's warm in here, folks, and we have right. a do two wonderful, more. wonderful time tonight with you all. We can do one more because it's so hot. I've got a special request. Yeah, I'm wondering. Yeah. Would you guys be offended if we did a non religious song to end with? Oh, okay. Well, An Everly Brothers song. Let it be me. Yeah. Would you guys You'll be alright with that. We, old we, church music. We, we know what we could do is we'll end our old church music set and then do that one at the, the heathens among us can request that we do let it be. <laughs> <laughs> the heathen and not. Yes. Yes. <laughs> it's just a fun one to say. So. Let's, okay, let's, let's end up our last church thing. With? With, with, with. Mm. Mm. Well, that's a good idea. Three men on the mountain. Oh, yeah. Okay. We're going to do three men on the mountain. Three men on a mountain. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. You ready for that? Okay, sure. this is our last one. Then. I have another idea. But we'll go down to the bar and we'll sing the next, you know, another <laughs> song that I have in mind that probably would flip people out. But anyway. Um, three men on a way it starts. Okay. We sang this one together for the first time in two years. So forgive us if we muff it. We may. 
You're the one who picked it. Three. Okay. Three men on the mountain. Up on Calvary. And the man in the middle was Jesus. He died for you and me. Well, the man on the left was a sinner. Tied to a tree he bled. He would have been forgiven. But he mocked the Lord and said, oh, You say you are the Son of God. They nailed you to a tree. Come down, come down and save us. If God your Father be. Three men on a mountain up on Calvary. And the man in the middle was Jesus. He died for you and me. Well, the man on the right was a sinner too. Sorry for his sin. He asked the Lord's forgiveness. And Jesus said to him, Fear not, fear not this earthly death. Before this day is o'er, you'll be with me in paradise on heaven's golden shore. Three men on a mountain up on Calvary, and the man in the middle was Jesus. He died for you and me. But I don't know it. Huh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll look it up. I'm it's sure very it's, good. Squire Parsons, right? The, the I'm sure it's in the Heavenly Highways hymnal. I will look it up. Yeah. Okay, let's do, let's do, let's do God Moves in Winston. Okay. Do you think God? Okay. 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 All right. And then, then we really will let you all go. Well, no, actually, <laughs> then we're going to do the, uh, 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 the other. Yeah. <laughs> God sent Jonah to the Nineveh land to preach the gospel to the wicked men. To Look at Doc. <laughs> okay. Right. He needs to read your lips. Okay. God sent Jonah to the Nineveh land to, to preach, preach the, the gospel, gospel to the wicked men, men to tell to repent of their wicked ways. Moral overthrow your city in 40 days. God moves in a windstorm. He roars in a windstorm. God moves and it troubles everybody in your mind. Jonah went down to the seashore to make, make up his mind which way to go. He boarded the ship and he paid his fare. And God got angry at Jonah down there. God moves in a windstorm. He roars in a windstorm. God moves in a windstorm. And he troubles everybody in your mind. in a storm on the water that day. God moves in a windstorm. He roars in a windstorm. God moves in a windstorm. And He troubles everybody in His mind. Well, they cast through Jonah overboard. And thought God sent a whale and swallowed him whole. He went on down to the Nineveh land. That whale poured Jonah on a bed of sand. God moves in a windstorm. He roars in a windstorm. God moves in a windstorm. And he troubles everybody in their mind. Jonah rose up from the sand. He went on walking to the Nineveh land. He preached the gospel at his command. Repent, repent. 
deep and you wicked men. God moves in a windstorm. He roars in a windstorm. God moves in a windstorm. And it troubles everybody in the mind. God moves, God moves in the wind. He roars in a windstorm. God moves, God moves in a windstorm. Gosh, I came up and I lived in the basement of the Presbyterian Church for about, what, how, from March? Ten weeks. March, no, no, March to... Uh, October. Was it October that we had the Create West Virginia Conference? And I wasn't up here the whole time, but I was up here a lot. And it was so much fun tearing out the basement door of the Presbyterian Church and running down the alley over to the mayor's office. And I had a little office. Uh, you know, I got to work in the in the conference room, and the guy that was the policeman, the town policeman, watched over me, took care of me, walked me home when it came time to leave. So because Becky would work late at night. Late at night, and he would be there patrolling, and he would see me. I'd say, "Okay, I'm ready to go." I had the best time in Richwood, West Virginia. I'll never forget the time that I had in this town. Uh, everybody was so good to me including the mayor, former mayor. <laughs> and, uh, oh gosh, it's great to be back here in Richwood. And I'm thrilled to see the wonderful things that are happening in Richwood. We visualized this, I'd like to say, in 2013. We could see what might happen here in Richwood, and by it's happening. So, let's see what it be named and we'll quit. I bless the day I found you. I want to stay around you. And so I beg you, let it be me. Don't And that you'll go. 